I don't know. I think their stock is supposed to be going through the roof right now. Oh, I bet. Oh, so. I bet. Yeah, my daughter actually got up and did math, got, went on the Zoom. They're doing oh, the Zoom, yeah. like lessons with the teacher. Mm -hmm. So, perfect. That's All good. Right. Yay. All right. So stand by. I'm going to send you the feed and then uh, yeah. just wait for again for it to you know, fade down and we'll go from there. Okay, sweet. Yeah, this is my town. Good morning, everybody. And good morning, everybody. And welcome to the 425 show. Uh, your place to be for all things real estate and lifestyle related here on the east side. I'm your host, Nicole Mangina with Windermere Real Estate. We're keeping the show going this week. We're all doing it from home. Zoom, if you're catching the video version, my new technology adventure for the week is I'm uh, playing with the Zoom background. So I'm looks like I'm in a tropical place. There's palm trees in the background. I'm really not. I'm I think it looks house. amazing. It's better yeah, than the studio. You know? Looks warmer. <laughs> I'm living vicariously through Zoom right now <laughs> and the backgrounds they provide. <laughs> We've got a great guest today, but as always, I like to start the show with a real estate update. And boy, every, every day is a new adventure with all of this, not just real estate. Uh, last week, they started the whole stay in place order where, you know, we're all supposed to hunker down and, you know, keep ourselves healthy. So we're doing that when that initially came out. They said that uh, we as real estate agents were not essential and we were supposed to stay home. Uh, they have since changed that. Governor Inslee changed that over the weekend. We are allowed to keep doing real estate. We are supposed to do it remotely whenever possible, but we are allowed to continue showing properties. There are quite a few restrictions around that or things in place to help keep everybody healthy. We're not supposed to have more than two people in the house at one time, and we need to make sure that we have a cleaning protocol for um, both the buyer and the seller to make sure that the house is clean when we get there and clean when we leave. So the good news is, is real estate is still going. Certainly it looks a little bit different right now with just the way that we're doing things. We're not doing open houses right now, but there are still things out there and things still happening. So there you go, stay tuned next week. Uh, when it comes to real estate, like I said, every week seems to be a new adventure. But right now we're still out there selling houses. Today, I'm excited to introduce our guest. We have Laura Smith with the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network joining us today. How are you, Laura? Good morning, doing well, thanks. Good, thanks. Not in Hawaii or I don't have as cool of a background right now. <laughs> I know, well, you know. <laughs> next week I'll have to pick something different. I'll see, like you said, we can download custom backgrounds. I don't know. We're, we're keeping it fun. <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little it, things it right really now. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network and what they do and kind of how you got involved with it. Okay. Um, well, the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network is an organization out in the Snoqualmie Valley. So that's mm -hmm. Duval through North Bend, like the far okay. east, um, if you think the far east of King County, the furthest you can sure. go. Often okay. um, people confuse it and don't actually think it's inside King County. So uh, yeah, so yeah, right. But you're east, you're not north, right? No, Which no, yeah. You in the Snohomish, it's definitely King County. Yep, absolutely. Um, and our organization is all about youth development for kiddos uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay. And um, rooted in the idea that keeping kids connected in meaningful ways to their community is sure. um, a protective factor for them as they grow. And so some of our programming includes um, school-based mentoring, um, suicide prevention, substance use prevention. Um, and then we have a, some components that are about helping families connect to resources should mm -hmm. they need resource support. And um, how I got involved. So we moved, we moved here um, from Colorado. Okay. 20 years ago. And we just happened to land in Duval. And um, I was not employed when we first moved here. And I came across a nonprofit in Seattle that did um, violence prevention curriculum. Sure. Um, so it uh, was right after the Columbine incident had happened. Mm. And previous yeah. to that, I was a teacher, you know, and I thought I was going to stay a teacher. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I came across this 
position um, developing curriculum for this nonprofit called Committee for Children. And that was kind of my, where my path split. I went away from education and, and I went directly into violence prevention and social skills development mm -hmm. pieces. Sure. And then just luckily, um, a little few years later, that was able to manifest in a position here in the Snoqualmie Valley right by my house. So wonderful. Is. That's great. Um, well, and I love, I love that you're, thank you for coming on the show to kind of share the message about what you do with your organization. I think it's such a timely message as well. And this is one of the main reasons that I love doing this radio show. You know, my job is I'll buy and sell houses. I am just a, such a big believer in this community. And I think that's what makes it great. And each week we try to highlight something. And you and I were chatting yesterday as we were kind of prepping for the show. The work that you do is always important and always relevant. But I think now more so than ever, I've had lots of conversations about this lately, you know, with this whole coronavirus that's going on and the shelter in place. You know, we're all super focused on the economic impact that it's having right now and the immediate health, you know, in terms of like physical health. But I think the mental health part of this is mm -hmm. huge as people are hunkering down and really kind of cutting off their connection with the outside world. It's great, you know, technology is helping a lot, but it's different right now when you spend all day in your house with limited contact with outside, you know, out of your family. And I think things like this are super important um, for lots of different reasons, but now especially. Right. Yeah, I was just reading up this morning about um, uh, just experts are saying that you may see, like with kids, uh, mm -hmm. little kids, you may see regressions in behavior. Someone who's potty sure. trained may no longer be potty trained for a little mm -hmm. while. Um, teenagers adopting different sleep patterns or, or negative or staying up super late sleep patterns. Just Mm -hmm. Lots of different changes as, as people, us too, try to figure right. out how we're um, dealing with our, our, the stress that we feel, as well as then how are we going to um, care for ourselves during this time frame. Absolutely. For so. sure. And, you know, to realize that our kids are absorbing this information as well, right? You know, yeah. we like to think, oh, the kids are immune to it. All they know is they just don't have school for the next, feels like, year and a half, as, if you're a parent. but um, they are absorbing this information as well. And so how can we help and support them and you know, make sure they come out of this hole as well? Right, yeah, and there's some great tips about, um, especially for even teenagers, teenagers and younger, trying to maintain some form of a schedule, not necessarily mm -hmm. a five, six hour a day school schedule. And I know sure. that there's a lot of stress and anxiety with parents about, you know, oh, now I'm supposed to be the homeschool parent, some of us feel, you know, have, have an education background, but some of us haven't done that. And right. I think everyone's gaining a significant appreciation for, for educators right now. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just knowing that you don't have to, you don't have to hold to a five or six hour a day school day. Um, I was watching the uh, superintendent of public instruction speak a couple of days ago, and he was sure. really reiterating, you know, I, it's a, it's a couple hours a day of learning mm -hmm. something that is speaking to your child. It, maybe right. it's from the suggested guidelines um, that are coming out from your school district. Older kids have, have more stronger, stronger um, guidelines that they need to be sticking to. But sure. young ones, just being, being flexible, having a schedule, ex not trying to um, implement any big behavior change programs, even if you're seeing sure. some challenging behaviors. It's just it's not the time. Right. And you're right. Um, they're hearing us talk. Um, so right. just being mindful about, and I know even with my teens, I, I know I, I kind of want to talk about this a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so trying to be mindful how much I'm talking even to my husband around them. I try sure. to make some time where I can just debrief with him or with other adult friends um, yeah. that I'm not constantly bringing it back up for them. Yeah. I think yeah. that's great. What are some of the programs that you offer um, through the network? Because you have, you have a lot of things for the, the kids and the teens, but you also have parent programs as well, correct? When I was on your website, it looks like you have lots of different resources. We do, we do, normally. Um, so yeah, we, I know it's all a little different right now, right? <laughs> Everything's uh, yeah. a little different. But. So um, 
to some of our fundamental values is we believe that a healthy community creates a healthy family and a healthy family supports a healthy youth. So we, we see like Love that. a child doesn't exist in a vacuum that you have to attend mm -hmm. to the whole. And so part of that is um, assisting parents. It seems like there's a lot of parent education in general when kids are very, very little right you know, learning you know the terrible twos and mm -hmm. how to how to um do some like lo lo love and logic when kiddos are young and then right. it feels like it drops off about uh mid, mid elementary school so that's where we try to pick mm -hmm. it up sure. and uh, we host a couple of different parenting workshops specific to just healthy family development uh, love and logic is one and that's a national program. And then the other one is called Guiding Good Choices. And that's more for students, parents of students who are moving in the middle school to, to lay the foundation for healthy family communication. Um, yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, it, well, the whole premise is you are going to have hard conversations, whether it's going to be a sex, drugs, um, sexuality. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have put in some legwork further, you know, earlier down the road, right, um, where you're having conversations on a regular basis, sometimes they're, you know, more deep conversations, and other times they're more family decision making conversations, mm -hmm. you're laying a great bedrock for when you have to have those harder conversations. And that's what Guiding Good Choices is 100% about, getting ready for that. those hard ones. Yeah. And then we also offer, um, we're offering this more and more. Uh, so we have, in one of the school districts we cover, we've, we've had four student deaths by suicide in the last year. Mm. And so we've been really trying to step up our support of um, adults in the community through sure. a workshop called Youth Mental Health First Aid. Mm -hmm. And that's, you probably, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a popular is not really the word I want to use, but it's an up and coming idea that um, similar to first aid, which we mm -hmm. all know we should take first aid and CPR, that right. there's this other component called youth mental health first aid that is equally as important as CPR and regular sure. first aid. Um, and so we've been running, normally we would run one of those classes on each end of the Snoqualmie Valley. So one in mm -hmm. say Snoqualmie and one in Carnation um, per year, but we've run five of them. Um, and we, okay. up, up until this um, stay home order, we, we were just running them as long as they're running full because we have a lot of hungry adults in the community wanting to become, sure. um, build their toolboxes because you never know which, uh, who a kiddo might yeah. reach out to yeah. when they're struggling. So Absolutely. That's, so what's, a, what's an example of like kind of a mental health first aid moment when they're in a situation or something happens that throws them off or kind of what would a scenario like that look like? Um, well, really youth mental health first aid covers not just suicide, um, suicidal ideation, but it covers kind of the whole um, spectrum of mm -hmm. mental health that a kid might be struggling with. Helps parents sure. understand that a lot of mental health um, challenges actually onset during adolescence. So gaining. Yeah, I've heard that, that actually, that for adults, really, it starts in adolescence, and we don't yeah. necessarily know how to pick it up or to understand it, but the, the precursors and the signs are there. Right. And I think um, one of the biggest things I, I think we, it's, if, if your gut is telling you that something is going on, mm -hmm. that might be out of the ordinary. Um, sure. Sometimes when you love someone, it's hard to see the things yeah. that might be out of the ordinary. Um, you think of lots of reasons why it could be out of the sure. And so just trying to encourage adults to kind of listen to their gut. If they, if a mm -hmm. kid gives them a red flag, to try to work hard not to ignore the, the right. red flag. Mm -hmm. um, and going ahead and using the tools that they have to step in. And so that particular curriculum teaches, uh, there, all of these different um, models have like a, an acronym. Sure. But the general concept is, Showing the person that is struggling that you care, being a good listener, mm -hmm. showing empathy, using words like, um, I can tell you're struggling. Can you, you, you want to tell me some more? Just very, sure. very open, non judgmental. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, we always talk about things that aren't helpful, such as, oh, 
I can think of the extreme examples. Um, just shutting people down. Oh, like for a kid. Um, oh, you'll find another girlfriend. Or, yeah. you know, don't you know your life is so good because of A, B, C, D, which, yeah, you know, I do that as a parent. You know, I want yeah. to tell my kids like, hey, look at this. I don't know why you're sad. Um, mm -hmm. That totally invalidates their feelings. Yeah. And I think we've, uh, as parents, we've all done it or at least thought it at some point in time, right? Yeah. Well, and we don't like to see them struggle. So, right. Um, and then the, after you show your care, then you ask the question, um, specific, specifically if someone is thinking of harming themselves and you've gotten that clue, you have to ask, are you thinking right. of, are you thinking of suicide? Sure. Um, and then we explore for adults, what are the next steps? Um, we mm -hmm. do a similar model with teens where we train teenagers to go into classrooms and we will go through a process of helping to determine what's, what's, what's a teenager's role sure. in being a friend and then what, mm -hmm. when does it need to be passed off to a supportive adult and who are yes. those supportive adults and what if you come across an ineffective adult, which mm -hmm. unfortunately does happen. Yeah, um, for sure. And how do you keep plugging down that road until you find the one that's going to help you? Yes, I think this is such a great topic. I'm so glad we're talking about this today. If you're just tuning in, we have Laura Smith, the executive director of the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network, um, joining us today. And it's we're talking all about, well, not just teens, but youth in general and um, one of the things you were talking about, what class that you guys offer is that they're making good choices. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. I know that we, we have a middle schooler and a high schooler and, you know, we have just taken the approach in our house of this is going to, you know, going to happen as a parent, you want to just assume that they're going to go through this whole thing and never be put in a weird situation or an uncomfortable situation. Right. <laughs> but we know that's not reality. So we have taken the approach of like, this is happening. Um, maybe sooner than you think. So let's, yes, let's talk about, okay, how do you make a choice? How do you um, feel comfortable calling us? And, you know, we had it with our sophomore. He went to a social situation that he thought was one thing. He got there. It was not that. Um, and it was, he knew it was not where he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, and it was great because he was comfortable. He called us. He's like, hey, you know what? You said you'd come get me. I need, I need you to come get me. And we did. And it was great. Right. And yeah. But to empower them to just know that that's just, it's, we, you know, in our house, we just take it as it's part of life. We'd love that if it wasn't, but it is. So right. let's send you off with some good tools and feeling com comfortable and confident yeah. in that moment to call us and know that we'll come get you. Right. And I think that is so great because I, I just, you do see a lot of kids who find that exploratory piece in their freshman year of college. Like maybe yes. they were a little bit under the thumb or significantly under the thumb right? <laughs> um, during high school. And then once they hit college, their, their coping mechanisms aren't necessarily in place to be able to right. respond in yeah. a way that um, is safe for them. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And I love you were talking about this earlier too. It sounds like you also teach the kids um, how to reach out to adults, but also to know if they're getting good, good feedback, because that's the other part is, and I have seen it before, you know, a lot of adults are there and they want to be there for kids and they care, but there are some ineffective adults out there not helping the situation. Yeah. And so, you know, giving them options for where to go. Yeah, that, it was interesting because that came up, gosh, probably eight or so years ago, we, I, we were training a group of kids and then we just opened it up to rent, to tough questions at the end. Mm -hmm. So the adults were still, still in the room. And one of them said, what if the parents is part of the problem yeah. and it took me it took me back um, and then it made us really think you know from their perspectives and sometimes legitimately so mm -hmm. the adults are part of this challenge um, right. something I'd love to bring up here in regards to we were talking about the youth mental health first aid class and adults kind of it seems like throughout the east side a lot of this area because it has been a, 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 an incredible, an incredibly tough year with student loss, um, mm -hmm. whether it's been by suicide or by accidental overdose. Um, something that we are noticing that I think is worth noting with the youth mental health first aid classes is we are seeing for every, 
100, 100 people, about five of the attendees will be male. Mm, the other 95 will be female. Okay. And I've been trying to kind of put my finger on how, and I've been trying to consult all the men I know, how um, do we better encourage men mm -hmm. um, to step into that like, space? And I, I, I realize it's something cultural that we've done. We've sure. created this space where men aren't, um, some men aren't as comfortable responding or being kind of in right. that role. Mm -hmm. um, but at least in our area, the four boys, the four kiddos who took their lives were all boys. And right. I don't know that they're all going to come to a mom. Um, and I'd really like a whole cohort of men also right. trained up. And so yeah. just put that out there to any men. If you see one of these youth mental health first aid opportunities, it's not a touchy feely class. It's one day long. Step into it and perfect your toolbox too. If somebody's out there and they would like to take a class or find out more about them, how do they do that? Well, during <laughs> normally you would be able to go to our website. <laughs> you can give two answers. Yeah. I know. Um, Today during, and the <laughs> during the non stay home um, time, um, you can. Honestly, you could Google youth mental health first aid and whatever town you're in, Redmond. Uh -huh. um, I know they're offered through Evergreen Health. If you're oh, in um, the Snoqualmie Valley, you can go to the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network.org mm -hmm. website. Um, this is a big initiative through King County. Got it. So the information is pretty easy to find. Okay, good um, to know. I'm also happy to have someone just contact me directly through my email, okay. which is um, Laura at S. V as in Valley, C as in community, mm -hmm. N as in network, dot info. Got it. Uh, and I can help connect people for sure. Okay, great. I, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's great that there's so many of those classes out there. And I think you probably, it sounds like your assumption is not that it's more females than males that experience this, it's probably more equal, but you know, it's not equal in terms of who feels comfortable showing up to get the help. Right, right. Well, and, and, and the, then in our area, I'd like to give them a lot of credit. There is some good thinking going on around, you know, do I get a few kind of um, champions or key leaders like the high school football sure. coach and the superintendent yeah. of the school district and actually bill it on the flyer as, you know, join so-and-so oh, yeah. and so-and-so as we all, and, and, and a male facilitator too. You know, the whole, sure. the whole room could be men. Um, yeah. That's more comfortable. Interesting, yeah. I love that you're trying, you know, and that's what it is, right? It's just a process of figuring right. out what the need is, how to help, how to get that word out. Because they do else. want, I, I, they do want to help. Exactly. Of course. Speaking of helping, if somebody's out there and would like to um, participate in the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network as a mentor or some other, in some other fashion, how do they do that? What opportunities are available for them? Uh, well, you, you know the mentoring so we do a school-based mentoring program in mm -hmm. Riverview and Snoqualmie Valley School Districts which is okay. a, um, a weekly opportunity for an, a, an adult volunteer to get together with the same mentee over the course we ask for a commitment of one school year okay um, usually usually it will continue into other school years just to kind of give it sure. give a heads up um, and these are kiddos who have been identified by the school as uh, a kid who could use a little extra, um, another uh, positive, consistent, caring adult in their life, someone who's going to mm -hmm. show up every week. And it's 100% about building a relationship. Sure. Uh, it's not a t tutoring session mm -hmm. or we're not doing math worksheets. We're doing, you know, my mentee and I, um, it's puzzles and it's art and it's talking and it's sure. opportunities for her to communicate. Um, mm -hmm. We're coming in on a hundred mentor mentee matches right now between the two school districts. Okay. We're still rolling it out. So next year we'll finalize and have mentors in every school mm -hmm. in both Snoqualmie Valley and um, Riverview school district. So that's a great way to get involved. Sure. Another great way just right now to get involved. Um, one of our programs is the weekend power pack program. So providing, okay. I, you guys, I'm sure you have this in like Washington school district too, um, weekend meal packs for kids. Who yeah. Yeah. Are, we call it pantry um, packs. But yes, yeah. Same perfect. Thing. Um, so we are the organization in, um, 
there's actually two organizations in the Valley who do this work, one in Riverview School District and one in the Snoqualmie Valley, but we're the Riverview. And uh, because of the way the um, COVID-19 has impacted the area, um, we've had to change our model, whereas normally volunteers would pack packs at home. Like mm -hmm. I might sign up for 10 packs, pack sure. them at my house and drop them off. We can't have that. And yeah. so um, we're finding that the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network's in the position now of purchasing all of the bulk food um, for the packs weekly, which we give out about 200 packs a week. So that's five dollars a pack. Great. That's about I don't know 11.25 a week in food. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. So if anyone feels inclined to make a donation in that way to support the weekend backpack program, um, that's spectacular. And then once we're out of this time frame. Um, we would encourage people to step back in and pack them themselves and get involved in a more hands-on kind of way. Perfect. Awesome. And we'll have links to all of this on our website after the show. If you want to be a mentor, donate financially, it's all, it all goes to a really good um, organization for sure. It'll be uh, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast is uh, where you can go to get all of the links and all of that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get all kinds of great things going there in the Snoqualmie Valley. Hey, thank you. It's yeah. a great place to live. It is. Yeah, I love it a lot. It's a great, and we always love spending time out there as well. So thank you so much for joining us today, Laura. I really appreciate you being here. Um, again, we've had Laura Smith, the executive director with the Snoqualmie Valley Community Network is, uh, has joined us on the show today. You run all kinds of great programs for the of the Valley and their parents. And I just, like I said, I love that there are organizations out there like this because I think they're so needed um, now really and always. Um, so thank you for being on the show, for sharing as much as you did about it and for just heading up this organization. It's really great. And Nicole, thank you. Thank you for giving um, this as a venue for, uh, I know you have a lot of topics on here, but as a venue for nonprofits to, uh, to share their yeah. work. They're, well, they're a big part of what that make this an important and great community. So we appreciate you immensely. So thank you for joining us today. Have fun sheltering in place and, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch up soon. Right. Take care. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Have a great week. <laughs> okay, all clear, ladies. Yay. Awesome. Nice job. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Benny. Thanks, Welcome. Laura. Thank you. I hope I wasn't going on and on. Um, no, it was for... perfect. Okay, no, that was great information. I thought it was perfect because it was good for the valley, but also just the area in general. Right. So yeah. perfect way to do it. So we'll uh, put together the blog post. We'll send you all the info and go from there. Ruby. All right. Hopefully we get to meet in person sometime. Hopefully. All right. Take care. Bye. Take care, Nicole. Bye. Bye, Bye. Benny. Bye-bye.